Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another fake Grand Order video. What are we going to be doing today? Well, today I'm going to be talking about the upcoming Morgan banner that's going to be releasing with the Water Monster Crisis event. That's going to be today's video. I hope you... Eh, let's get right into it. I was about to do the ending bit of my videos right at the beginning. It's alright. Let's go right into the video. So, when is the banner actually expected? As you can see here on Japan, it happened a week after... Uh, the start of Sea Monster Crisis. Sea Monster Crisis started on us, for us, technically on the 29th, but maintenance happened, happened on the 28th, so that would mean that the banner itself would be released on April 4th, um, which would be a Thursday, and it will happen during day roll. It, just because I've seen the occasionally some one or two people ask, is like, hey, you lied to me, the banner's not up yet. It's coming, just April 4th day roll, and if you're not on California time, then maybe your start date is a little bit different from mine. <laughs> I'm doing my best, but the best way of doing it is whenever maintenance started for you on the game, add a week, that's when the banner is for you. So, let's go into the actual banner now. Um, before we start, just to give a quick uh, reminder, I guess is the right way of saying it. Yeah, it's a reminder. Morgan is an extremely popular character, and she's also a character that comes back fairly often enough. Uh, she might even come back one more time during this year. I'd have to double check on it, actually. Let me pause it real quick. Oops, I paused just the song. One moment. Pausing the video now. I was right. As you can see here, literally, this is planned for later in the year. Morgan will be back. So you can see that... She's a character that is extremely popular on the JP side, and she will come back fairly often. Why am I saying all this? I'm saying this because if you're someone who maybe has a little bit limited funds, or you have a certain problem with actually spending on the game, or have a problem, you know, it is a gacha game. It, it kind of preys on a lot of things that the, they prey on in, like, casino-type ways. Like, they prey on your weakest <laughs> in your weakest moments. And Fago does that by making characters extremely likable and just units that you want. So there's plenty of people who want Morgan that will gladly be like, I will ignore everything. And then they will go for her and they will fail and they will... They'll be bummed out about it and then they will log on and they will see plenty of people who are who are able to get Morgan and suffer no ill, like, hey, they won't talk about how much it took. They'll just say, I got Morgan, I got Morgan. You'll see that one play that one friend of yours who barely plays the game will log in, do a single summon, I got Morgan. And that will then fuel you to just go for her even more. I'm here to tell you, it's okay to just close the game. Don't worry about it. No character is worth going over for something, and especially if you have those kind of issues. I, I, I understand. I've been in situations like that where I did not... I, I let the baser impulses take over, and I've always regretted it. So I'm here to tell you, it's okay to just kind of move on and just close the game. Don't even look at it. Go somewhere else for a bit. It's just... it's fine. Morgan will be back. You will get her eventually. And I also say that as someone who has failed multiple times trying to get Quetz to MP5, I have never specifically... <laughs> fallen prey to just spending a buttload of money and saying fuck it i'm gonna go for it and that's specifically because i've learned the, the art of closing the app immediately and then not playing the game for the entire day <laughs> so please be cautious if you're smart with your money and you know what you're doing this isn't for you it's for the people who need help and there you go now in terms of the actual unit and the banner now we can talk about that the banner is related to the Sea Monster Crisis, so you'll get the CEs. None of the CEs are too crazy good, though Eye of the Tiger does have a starting quick star, and if you don't have Golden that catches the carp, or similar CEs to that, that can be very useful. Uh, and besides that, it's just literally, do you like the art on it? Which, to be fair, the art for Goddess of the Nether Realm looks very nice and is very cool. The other unit that's on this banner who is not Morgan is Wu Zetan, and Wu Zetan is a fairly good unit. Uh, not to go over too much, because this is, by the way, the second time I've recorded this. There's not much I can say about Wu Zetan other than she is a quick support. Uh, she's an assassin quick support, and a lot of assassins kind of live under the umbrella of why would I ever use you over Kama? And the answer is for Wu, 
Her reason to be used as a single target assassin is that she can at least support others using quick. And she also offers this right here, which is an increase of crit damage, um, which is tied to our NP, which is something very different. And 50% crit damage is 50% crit damage, so you can find plenty of silly, fun ways of doing it. She's also not limited, so you'll get plenty of them. My brother has her MP5, I have her like MP2. You'll find ways to get Wu. Wu is not the reason you're summoning for this, but I'll at least say... There are ways to use Wu. Uh, if you have any specific other ways to use Wu, feel free to tell me. And the next time Wu has a banner that is not tied to Morgan, I'll gladly spend more time talking about her. But for now, gonna go to the actual reason people are here. Morgan. Here's Morgan's unit. Morgan. Uh, there is a spoiler. Fuck, I forgot to say that at the beginning. Um, hopefully you didn't see it too much, but there might end up being spoilers on this page just because she is a Lost Bolt 6 unit. Um, I can't even mention, a, I just realized in the previous video I mentioned something else that would technically be a spoiler. But either way, find out in a year or so <laughs> when everyone has to deal with it. There'll come a point in time where you will know another name that Morgan goes by. But for now, we'll stick with this. Morgan, Berserker. She is one quick, two arts... Uh, to Buster. Her first skill is the Charisma of Desire B. Increases party's attack for three turns. Charges on MP gauge. Reduces all enemies' defense for three turns. The attack up is 20%. The MP gained is 30%. And the defense up, uh, defense down is 30%. On a cooldown of 6. Her second skill is the Protection of the Lake C. Charges one ally's MP gauge. Increases party's MP generation rate for three turns. 20% to MP gauge. 20% to MP rate. 25% to MP rate on a cooldown of 5. Her third skill is Beyond the Furthest End. Grant self gut status for one time, three turns. Increases on crit absorption for three turns. Increases on crit damage for three turns. Grant self regeneration buff for three turns. Reduces all enemies' attack for one turn, uh, every turn for three turns. <laughs> Reduces their critical attack chance for one turn, every turn for three turns, and then gains crit stars. Um, no turns, just right at that moment. Uh, the revive at level ten, she revives with three thousand HP. Her absorption is five thousand. Her crit damage is 30%, her attack lowering is 20%, her crit chance is 20%, and the, the crit chance lower is 20%, and the stars gained is 15 on a cooldown of 7. Her passive skills are Madness Enhancement B, Magic Resistance A, Item Construction EX, Territory Creation B, and the Fey Eyes A. Her, her pen skill for the third is an Anti-Saber Attack, Anti-Saber Critical Attack Chance Resistance. And our Noble Phantasm is the Rank EX, Roadless Camelot, the now unreachable Utopia, a Rank EX, Noble Phantasm that is anti-fortress, it hits six times, it increases its own damage against round table knights or fey enemies by 50% for one turn, activates first, deals damage to all enemies, inflicts curse, and then overcharges party's MP by one stage for one time. The curse I should also mention does a thousand damage and for five turns, it is applied to one for five turns. The MP level 1, at MP level 1 her damage is 300%, at MP level 5, which I know plenty of people have gotten her to MP level 5, is 500% damage. Her overcharge effect is a deal extra damage to enemies with the man attribute, and the charge, at charge level 1 it's 150%, and if you get her to the final charge level, it is 200, 200%. And that is Morgan, Berserker Morgan, Morgan Le Fay. Whew. Okay, so where to start? Um, well, to start off, she's an insane unit. She's extremely good, <laughs> on par with Arjuna Altar, just not in the ways you would expect. Um, Arjuna Altar is the I'm going to kill you now, Berserker, and Morgan is the I'm going to do everything else, Berserker. She can be used as support. My Morgan, for example, I use her as a support with Arash and uh, Heracles to farm hands and that's how i kind of use her and i don't need to do the whole looping there's no need to loop because when you just have the right ce's attached which are ones that give starting np and stuff like that you don't have a give you don't have to care about anything else <laughs> you can you can do enough damage just by doing that and you can figure stuff out that way i've also heard that on jp this was a very popular way of playing where people at some point didn't even bother going with looping they're just like there's no reason to loop just use morgan Use her buffs here, and then just boom, hit the enemy, hit them hard, and every, um, I think it was that every NP was, that was of support started with MP in general, so they give you 30%, so if you combine that with, um, 
the second skill, which is mana loading, you would start with 50% NP at the very start. So then that way, these two skills can support her herself. But at the same time, if you go double Morgan, this can also charge your own. Because you can see this gives 30%, so then another Morgan will give another 30%. And then you can then use her as support along with giving overcharge. There's plenty of units who get much stronger per overcharge. As you can see here, Morgan, for example, can do 175% to man attributes. But there's plenty of others that can do way more. For like example, Arash does 200% extra damage at charge level 2. And if you get him to charge level 3, it is, I believe, 400% damage. So you can see how the damage can kind of stack and how specific team builds can be used in that kind of way with her. You don't even need to use her that way, though. You can also just use her straight up for buster looping if you want. She's plenty good at that. Uh, when you loop with buster, you typically use Vich. Uh, Vich lowers the cooldown by two. Um, and you use two of those skills, so that would give minus four. That means that on the final turn, you'll be able to get this first skill back, which is an additional 30% NP. And then this skill right here is 20% and also on a cooldown of five, so you'll actually get this back on the second turn and be able to use it again if you so want. Um, which is very good. Uh, again, depending on your kind of specific build, you can kind of then go from there and, like loop specifically only using Morgan, which I've done on a capable of an occasional times, because usually what you do is that if you start with an NP that is already starting with at least 50%, you can just use her first two skills, do your NP with Morgan, next turn... No, wait, no, that doesn't work out specifically in my head. I'm trying to think about the specific way I do it. Okay, no. It's a 50% starting NP -er, and then I have the second skill mana loading up, so that way, when you use the first skill, it gets... No, that's not how I do it specifically. There's a way of doing it. Probably what I'm doing is that I'm thinking of using it with Kaleidoscope, and that's the way I do it. <laughs> with Kaleidoscope, you can do it pretty easily, but then you don't have to really worry about that. But the best way of doing it is that you typically just swap out one of the bitches for Oberon, but sometimes it doesn't even need to be Oberon. You can use Waver. You can use someone else who can just give... NP at that point and you'll be perfectly fine and able to kind of get going you could use Scotty for all I care you could use Castoria literally anyone as long as they give enough to give the full go around on her NP you should be able to loop with her and would loop with it no problem um you can use her for challenge quest because the third skill here is actually pretty good for challenge quest because it gives you a, a gut status it gives you a quick crit bomb it gives you a, redu a reduction of critical attack chance it gives them a reduction of attack for three turns um, which Berserkers infamously kind of instantly get murked the second they get hit by anything. <laughs> because they have such, uh, they take such high damage from everything that a crit is basically an instant way to lose your Berserker. So every Berserker needs to have some kind of protection or they can't really be used in challenge quests unless you're just looking to maximize damage like with Kentoki or something. Um, and this is only on a 7 turn cooldown so you'll get it back at a decent enough clip, um... So it is, it is a good way of kind of using her, and it's pretty good. Um, she can be used in a multitude of ways. There's so many ways that you can do it that I'm... It's similar to the Arjuna or Castoria way of explaining a unit that I feel like I'm not doing them enough justice, even though I've only talked about their positives. Um, there is a single negative with Morgan, which is something I've run into occasionally, but not all the time. Um, their issue with Morgan is that occasionally if you are not fighting someone of the man attribute, she will not do enough damage if you are not specifically doing, um, no, no, even if you deal with that. The problem is, is if you're not fighting someone of the man, she sometimes just doesn't do enough damage and won't kill. Like I said, Arjuna Alter is someone who's a little bit more tailor-focused to actually killing fully and easily. Morgan has a lot more of her damage kind of spread out to other units. As you can see here, this is the only thing that actually buffs her herself, because this gives attack... 20% to the party and then nothing ever nothing else on here actually gives to the party like this MP generation rate is good for support but it doesn't really help with um, much else here in terms of damage the crit star damage and the crit damage is very good but again that's in a challenge quest type of scenario so it doesn't really help in this case the noble phantasm where she does bonus damage against round table knights and fey is very good but if you're not fighting a round table knight or fey, this doesn't apply at all. Uh, the curse damage, while it's nice, it <coughs> a thousand damage in the grand scheme of things is not that amazing. 
So if really she's relying heavily on the enemy having the man attribute, and if you do, do not have the man attribute, then you're just not going to be able to do enough damage in some instances. This can be mitigated, of course, if you are someone who is go into grailing or golden foeing or doing something like that. You can increase her that way. The most telltale way of increasing her damage is to get multiple NP copies. So that's why I should say specifically, this specific drawback only really happens at MP level 1. And if you're someone who has maybe her at like MP level 3, I doubt that you ever run into this issue. <laughs> if you ever end MP level 2, you likely don't run into this issue. And if you have her in MP level 5, you sure as hell don't run into this issue. So it's not really, it's kind of like one of those issues where it's like, yes, it does happen if you have her at MP level 1. You should plan accordingly, but it's never been a thing that's ever stopped me from using her. I've written like, oh man, I need to switch off because I'm not specifically getting it done or something. Like even in those kind of weird scenarios, I can still figure out a way to kind of do something else and make it work. She is... Absolutely an amazing unit. Absolutely worth owning, worth going for. If you're going for her for meta reasons, she's relevant. If you're going for her for character reasons, it's relevant. If you're going for her because you just really, really like her as a woman, congratulations. There's also a very valid way of going for it. It is fantastic as well. There is just no way that Morgan is bad in any kind of conceivable notion. <laughs> her character writing, fantastic. Her character kit, fantastic. The art... It's saber face stuff, but, you know, that can be pretty good, too. It's grown on me over time. The funny thing is that when she launched, a lot of people actually really did not like Morgan. And she was kind of a slow burn. After it lost Belt 6, it, it was like a phenom phenomenon happened. You, it, it is very interesting to kind of, like, live in this post-Morgan world where it's like, oh, yeah, Morgan, one of the most popular characters. Her unit, super well-loved, super good. Everyone knows this. But on release... The other two units actually got a lot more attention, and that includes um, the two units that she released with, and that also includes uh, uh, Lancelot, Faye Lancelot and Melusane when she released as well, is that those three kind of took the main focus, and not a lot of people were focusing in on Morgan, but then over time, as more people kind of went through Lost Belt 6, actually, I think Melusane came out maybe a month after, so maybe she wasn't 100%. But the point is, is with the ones that were releasing, which is... Um, Bargist and Tristan it typically was between those two that I would see the most in but then it was a slow creep up of Morgan eventually taking over to the point where it was just like nothing Morgan fan artists were drawing nothing but Morgan everyone was going Morgan they did a poll over in Japan to say which berserker do you like using Morris and Morgan beat over Arjuna which was crazy because uh, it is still, even though everyone acknowledges that Arjuna Alter is the stronger of the two berserkers they still prefer using Morgan because of the different kind of ways that you can use her in different kind of team builds and not just all focus on damage. Um, though, of course, if all you care about is damage, then obviously then Andre Walter will always beat out Morgan in that case. But it's okay. <laughs> it's alright. You can have a unit have uh, you can have a unit for different reasons and stuff like that. But anyway, all that to say, 100 percent worthy of going for. If you don't have enough Saint Quartz to go for her then you can probably wait and see it. The only thing I want to be hesitant on, on going for it any further, is of course, obviously, if you can't afford to go for it, don't go for it. Like I said at the beginning, don't go for it. It's okay. The other thing, though, if you're someone who is saving and you're just like, um, is it between her or Castoria, which is coming in likely near the end of April, actually, because this says May 11th, but we've been going a little bit faster. So I would actually assume this a week earlier. So that would probably be somewhere around... Mm, early May, maybe late April, something like that. Like, that's probably when I would expect the 25 million downloads. And if you don't have Castoria, it's definitely to kind of... I would probably... Mm, I would probably go over Castoria over Morgan. Just because she kind of opens up a lot of... Morgan is extremely good. Maybe this is just a personal opinion thing. But I definitely find myself using um Castoria more than I find myself using Morgan, but maybe that's also a playstyle issue. I'm using uh, Morgan now a lot more just because my uh, Castoria reached a bond 10, so I figured that was the sign to, hey, use uh, different units maybe now. <laughs> so I've started using a little bit different, but it's something to keep in mind. Obviously, if you're a newer account and you're just like, man, I would love Morgan, 
she would go fantastic in my box. Keep in mind, Castoria would also go fantastic in your box, and it's time for you to pick the hard decision. I can't make that decision for you. If it was up to me, I would always pick Castoria. But it's up to you to actually make that decision at the end of the day. All I can tell you is that this is what this unit does. I think this unit is fantastic. I think she's absolutely worth going for. It's just something to keep in mind is that summer and anniversary are going to be very rough. And if you're a new account and you want Castoria, the end of the month is about to be very rough for you. So it's time to make the big decisions. Plenty of people are already ready for it. I've seen enough comments from people to know that, oh yeah, no, they've been ready for Morgan. Uh, but like I said, if you're, un if you're not ready for Morgan right now, don't worry about it. She'll be back in November. <laughs> it's, no, this isn't the old Fago where units disappeared for two years without ever saying anything. <laughs> they will come back eventually. But anyway, that's Morgan. I wish you guys the best of luck of going for her. Um, I'm not going to be going for her because even though I would like that second MP copy so badly, I need to save for Super Bunyan. And obviously, I love Bunyan, and I've been waiting two years for Bunyan, so I'm going to go for Bunyan. Even though they would probably do me real- even though a second MP copy of Morgan would be pretty sick. I finally have over 300 tickets, so maybe I'll just use a single ticket on Morgan and see what happens. I haven't been able to get a 5 star yet in 2024, <laughs> so I'm kind of antsy to get one already, but I mean, I'll just keep on waiting for Bunyan, I think. Um, Best of luck to you. Feel free to tell me if you want to come back to the video and tell me how you did. Feel free, because I'm not going to be doing a Morgan summon video. I already have Morgan. My brother has Morgan. There's no reason for us to go for Morgan. Um, and yeah, best of luck to you. Uh, that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. As always, if you want to show support, you can always leave a like on the video, comment, subscribe. It does support the channel a whole bunch. Um... You can check out some of the other videos I got. We're still doing Exhibition Quest. I think today when I launch this video in about two hours, or depending on if you've already, if this video is two hours old, um, our fight against Eric Bloodax just went up. And if you're, if there were two videos that you would ever should see of the, our Exhibition Quests. One is Eric Bloodax, and the other one is Mephistopheles for the like five minute rant I go on at the end and start getting angry at Mephistopheles. But if there was two videos that you would need to see, it'd probably be those two. Very good. Though I do like, I did have fun recording a whole bunch of them, even though a lot of them we did not do very well at. We'll, we'll, we'll do better next time. Maybe. Who knows? Doubt it. I wish we had realized that we could have used Morgan. I didn't realize. I forgot that her third. I have been using it only as like a as a star, like a a crit bomb. That's how I've been using it. I forgot completely that you would probably potentially use it for its guts ability. <laughs> I kind of just forgot, and so <laughs> I forgot about its attack lowering and its critical chance lowering. I'm like that would have been really useful in some of these fights. <laughs> Would have been very nice to know, but unfortunately I did not remember in time. Now I know. But anyway, it was, like I've said beforehand, when a unit is so good, sometimes you just forget that they do really good stuff. Like, uh, Morgan is so good, I completely forgot that she could also be used in challenging type fights. <laughs> She's just that good. Anyway, I've been going on long enough. That's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.